Hey, John here. How about a quickie? Retro.ASM. All right, so we're playing around uh, with our BIOS. Let's look and see. Since the last time I worked on this, I decided to more formalize how debugging output is going to work in the BIOS that I'm writing here. So what I did is I, I got a little document that I added here on this uh, symbol right here, the dot debug symbol, where this is the retro ASM source code file here, okay, where our BIOS is being implemented. So what do we do? Um, if I set this symbol to zero, I'm going to turn off all the debugging, the noise, you know, all the printed junk that comes out of my BIOS when I'm developing this thing, right? Because we're going to have to print stuff out like crazy, and then it's going to cause noise and stuff while we're trying to run CPM and our BIOS will be printing all sorts of stuff. We may want to shut that off, okay? And we don't have to go and delete all of our debugging code because five minutes later, we might want to turn it back on again, right? Come on. No one's going to write it perfect on the first try. You're going to want to go back and turn it back on again, okay? Now, I will acknowledge that there's different kinds of debugging out. So I'm going to use the, uh, an idea of different levels, right? So level one, level two, and level three. And as the number goes up, we'll get more noise, okay? Uh, that'll be printed when the BIOS routines run. Okay, now we also have debug macros inside of the various libraries of driver code. And we've already seen that in the past. We could turn those on and off on their own, but this will be at it in, in the higher level in the BIOS. This will not affect the library drivers because the little dot in this label means it's a local label. It will not be seen or influence in any way any other file that is included in the uh, BIOS source code, including the actual CPM source code there. And at the bottom of this file where we have all the other includes, none of these will see that label, right? Okay, so uh, there's two different ways to do this. One is to have a whole bunch of different labels or have one label that's treated as a binary number with mask bits. And if the low, least significant bit might be on, then maybe I wanna see console debugging. And if the, in the second to least significant bit is on, maybe I wanna see disk debugging and so on. I'm not gonna get that sophisticated, okay? I'm gonna acknowledge the simple fact that when you're working on new code, you might want to see a uh, debug that's specifically <laughs> related to just the new code that's under development. And you may want to shut off all the other noise that is, you know, what we would call the, the typical and normal, you know, type of debug messages that you might want to see. In addition to just the stuff that is, you know, the latest, greatest stuff on your mind, what you're working on right here, right now. Okay. So this is meant to be uh, temporary. Level one is a temporary debug messages that you'll probably either remove when you're done or you'll promote those to become regular normal debug messages that you'd want to see in, on, uh, on, in any amount of output, all right? Now, these are really loosely defined. Uh, level three would be, uh, you know, all of the above types of output plus any random noise. Let me, let me show you an example. Maybe that'll explain the whole thing. Okay, so right now I got this thing set to level three, which is maximum noise. All right, so let's look and see what the effect of that would be. So if you go down here and you look at the debug output that we've seen before, what I did is I put some macros in here. So if, you, if, if debug is equal to zero, this expression is false, and the assembler won't even assemble this stuff. It won't, the code won't even be in there, right? But if debug is greater than zero, and we're looking at the cold boot routine right here, right? The first thing that gets entered after the flash boots up the system is it branches in here and it does all this fun stuff here. So what I'm going to do if there's any, if debug is turned on at any level at, at all, I'm going to say, hello, uh, the bias boot routine has been entered. And I'm going to print out the debug level number in hex using the usual uh, hex dump routines, okay? The reason I decided to do this is because if you decide to boot up your CPM and it doesn't say anything and it's just sitting there, you got to ask yourself, well, did none of my debug output print? Or did I forget that debugging is off? Okay, so this happens like right away, right after the console is initialized in the cold bootloader, it's going to print this out. Okay, 
this will most likely come out okay unless you've like destroyed the console driver or something like that. So this is reliant on the minimal level stuff. <laughs> Did the SD card get read in and does the console work? If so, then this will print out and let you know that you're by that you're uh, rather the uh, the debug logic is turned on or not. And if it is turned on, what level am I on right now? <laughs> I've, I've been I've been fooled by this in my own code many a time. So first thing you want to do is say, oh, by the way, <laughs> debugging is on. And hey, dumb, dumb, it's set to level three or level one or whatever. OK, if debugging is off, it doesn't say anything at all. So as we warm our way down here. We talked about this one before. Uh, during the warm boot process, I dumped out the zero page. OK. Now that is incredibly noisy and not really valuable. 99.9% .9 of the time, nobody ever wants to see this no matter what. Even if you're debugging the thing, you probably don't want to see that. To me, that's my level three. Super noisy, okay? Normal setting would be level two, which is like, well, this is useful and it'll at least let me know what the BIOS is up to, but without spewing huge memory dumps all the time to clutter up my screen. All right, so you getting the idea here? I certainly hope so. Uh, all the other debug routines that we've already seen in here, I've added these macros to. So all the little high I'm entered, high I'm entered, high I'm entered routines are all set to level two. And, uh, What's happening as we go down here, now we've already done most of these things here, the sector routines, the set DMA, all these are going to be level twos. And then we're going to get down to what, what's going on here. If any debug is on anywhere, odds are we would need to call the debug disk routine. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on if any level is on, because it'll probably call this, right? Uh, or if it doesn't, it's just dead code in there. Uh, and the reason we want that on is because we got to get the read routine and the write routine working. So right now, this is under development, so I set the debug level to 1. So if we assemble this thing and set the debug level to 1, what will happen is the only output we'll probably see is the initial cold boot output and just the read routine debug here and the write routine. That is the stuff we're developing. We can ignore everything else if we want to. Odds are, if we're going to do this new development here and it's going to be noisy, and it, like I said, this is going to be short-sighted, just print junk out. This is going to be spewing all over the place. We'll probably clean it up before we say, okay, I'm done, and maybe I'll just formally leave a really quick, simple, I'm writing to sector such and so, and promote this to be a level two kind of a thing down the road. All right, now. Uh, as is all the case with all software, I'm sure this will go awry at some point, but it's better than nothing. And uh, it's better than, in my opinion, going around and deleting things when you're done only to turn around and have to add them back in again later when you forgot uh, that it actually is broken and you need to turn it all back on again. Or throwing around a bunch of, you know, uh, semicolons to comment it out and turn it back in. My experience with that is that it just turns into a giant mess. It's best, it, it, again, in my my opinion, it's best to leave all this stuff in here and comment it out conditionally like that. So it's real easy to just turn it on and off by changing this number right there. So if we compile it up... Then we put our SD card into the Raspberry Pi. Then we program it. We sync it for good measure. Then we put the SD card back into our retro board and press the reset button. And we should see whatever debug output we really want to see. All right, so this is where we kind of left off last time. Uh, the very last thing I said, I'm going to add the uh, call, extra call to set DMA before we boot up uh, the CCP, right? So here is what's happening today. The flash boots up. I'm on level three, and it tells me I'm on level three, and that's why this extra spew with the zero pages out coming out down here, okay? So that's what all this stuff means with the debug macros and the new if and end if stuff that I just pushed out in the repo. So now I'll just leave my debug code in there. So if you really want to be able to reproduce what I'm doing here, uh, you can. Uh, otherwise, I mean, what would I be doing? I'd be like deleting all my code and then you'd have to put it back in. I think this is a better way to go, uh, especially if we want to collaborate on anything. So 
Pull request welcome. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.